So have you ever noticed that there's no pink or magenta lasers? And it's not because people wouldn't like them. It's because what if I told you magenta is a lie? By which I mean it's just not a color of the rainbow. It is a real color, it's just not a color of the rainbow. Which begs the next obvious question, well what does count as a color of the rainbow? And that's what I'm going to be talking about today and along the way we're going to learn about how humans perceive color and what colored light really is. So a color of the rainbow is exactly what it sounds like. It's a color that you can see if you take white light from something like the sun and you pass it through something like a prism or a diffraction grating like this and you can see that color from that rainbow, right? So I take this white light source here and pass it through this grating and you can see there's all those different colors. There's blues and reds, yellows, everything in between. But you'll notice that pink and magenta are nowhere to be found. And that's because they're not actually colors of the rainbow. And well, what are the colors of the rainbow other than the circular answer of there are colors you can see when you split white light into a rainbow. Well, colors of the rainbow are what's called monochromatic light, which is also what a laser produces. Like this laser only produces red light. And so mono, single, chrome, color, means that the light consists of only one color, or to be more specific, it consists only of one wavelength because light is electromagnetic waves. It's also photons, but we're not going to talk about quantum mechanics at all today. And the waves of electromagnetic radiation have a wavelength, right? The distance between the peaks and troughs of the waves, and depending on how long that distance is, that wavelength, they are perceived by our eyes as being different colors. And we can see everything from a wavelength of 400 nanometers, approximately, to 800 nanometers, approximately, with 400 corresponding to blue and 800 corresponding to red. And we can see it a little bit past that. It's more like you know, 380 out to like 850 or something like that. And so colors of the rainbow are all of the individual wavelengths of light that the human eye is capable of seeing. But the way that we see colored light is not by determining the specific wavelength of the light, right? And you might have heard correctly that we have three types of photosensitive cells in the, the backs of our eyes, in our retinas, and these are the so-called cones that can see red, green, and blue light. And you might have also heard, also correctly, that computer screens and TV and phone screens synthesize color for us by using red, green, and blue pixels to simulate all the colors of the rainbow, or almost all of them, and we'll explain why there is something of a limit to the colors they can produce, but they are pretty good. And so what I'm going to show you now is a graph of the response of the human eye to different colors of the rainbow, different wavelengths of light, right? And so first I'm going to show you the response of the three individual types of photocells, the three different types of cones, right? So you see there's the, on the left, there's the blue, and then in the middle, there's the green, and on the right, there's the red. So you'll notice that they actually overlap quite a bit. And the blue cones have their peak sensitivity at a short wavelength. The green cones have their peak sensitivity at a middle wavelength. And the red cones have their peak sensitivity at a long wavelength. But they all have the ability to see light outside of their peaks. And so when we see a color, it's always based on the ratios between how stimulated the three different types of cones that we have in our eyes are. So the next curve I'll show you is a sort of approximate graph of the total sensitivity of our eye to colors of the rainbow. And so that line that's kind of running over the top is 
how much total response we have to each wavelength, running from very deep blues all the way to very deep reds with all the colors of the rainbow in between. But once again, you'll see that there's no pink and there's no magenta. And so to understand why that is, I am going to do a little bit of a demonstration using the video. So very minor seizure warning here that I'm going to be messing with the RGB channels of the screen. I'll try to do a smooth transition so that it's not seizure inducing, but uh, if you're prone to that sort of thing, this is a quick warning for that. So I'm gonna hold up as we go. I, I have the rainbow flag uh, in the background here, which I guess, happy Pride Month, it is still June, but I'm gonna also hold up this printed out RGB and cyan and yellow rainbow. We'll start with blue, because it's at the top of this printout and it's the shortest wavelength. And so your screen has red, green, and blue pixels. So I can turn off the red and the green. And so now you should just be seeing blue. And so correspondingly, you see everything that was blue is fairly bright. Everything that wasn't is fairly dark. And that's because you have blue pixels in the screen and you have blue photocells. So that's all honky-dory. So what about the next color though, which is cyan or various shades of blue, green, and turquoise? Well, there are colors of the rainbow. There is monochromatic light between blue and green, but you don't have any cyan or turquoise pixels in the screen. You have blue pixels and you have green pixels. So, well, we can simulate that color of the rainbow by just turning on the green pixels too. And now you can see the blue is blue, the green is green, and the cyan is cyan, and then the yellow and the red should both be relatively dark. So now the whole screen kind of looks different shades of blue and green though, because there's no red. So of course, next up, if we want to transition into green, we can turn off the blue pixels completely. Because now you're just seeing green, and again, you have green photocells, so now we're back on an actual color you can see that the screen is producing directly. Because remember with the cyan, we were simulating light that's in between, but we don't actually have dedicated cones for seeing cyan light anyway, so it's kind of no big deal. And likewise for green, we do have cones for seeing green, so it's perfectly easy to just turn only those on and everything that was green is bright and everything that was blue or red is dark. And so up next, of course, is we want to see yellow. So we're going to turn on the red pixels again. And now everything that was yellow is bright. Everything that's green is br was green is bright and everything that was red is bright and everything that was blue is dark. And so again, you don't have yellow cones. You have red cones and green cones and you see yellow when the red and the green are equally stimulated. And so yellow light that's actually monochromatic light in between red and green is indistinguishable to our eyes from an equal combination of green light and red light. So there's really no problem with simulating yellow with a combination of green and red because our eyes only perceive yellow as a result of seeing equal amounts or equal stimulation, I should say, on our red and green cones in the first place. So it's essentially a perfect simulation of the color yellow. And then finally, of course, if I turn the green back off, now we just see red. And again, you have red cones, the screen is emitting red light, everything is monochromatic, it's just different brightnesses of red, and everything that was red is bright, everything that wasn't red is not bright. but we're looking at a wavelength that the human eye actually has a cone for, so everything is all honky-dory. So now I can turn them all back on, and you see the color, you see the full color image again. And I could also turn it into grayscale, and we can make it so that we see what people call black and white, but really it shouldn't be called black and white because it has every shade of gray in there. And it's actually, this is actually not monochromatic because grayscale contains equal amounts of red, green, and blue. It's just that there's no contrast between the colors, right? White is what we perceive when our red, green, and blue cones are all equally stimulated. 
and that necessarily requires some combination of different colors, right? So far, we've been talking about colors that we can see either with a combination of multiple wavelengths or with wavelengths that are on or in between our the wavelengths that our cones peak in their sensitivity. So what about magenta, though? So, well, let's go back to the full color image. Well, you might have guessed, right? There's all these different combinations, but there's one we didn't try, right? We did just red, just green, just blue, and then we did red. Well, let me make it so it's the same direction as last time. We did blue plus green, which gave us cyan. And I'll turn the saturation up so that it's actually just making every pixel cyan uh, by turning down the contrast between the blue and the green. And we also did yellow, where we did green and red. And again, I'll change, I'll, you know, here's, you know, with just the blue off versus with if I equalize the green and the red across every pixel. And then, well, finally, let's turn them all back on and equalize it to black and white. Well, what if I turn just the green off? Ta-da! Magenta. But you'll notice, for this one, we had to turn off the color that's right in the middle. Right? Because with all those other colors, I told you we're simulating light with a wavelength in between the peaks of the two cones. But now we're simulating, or we're stim we are equally stimulating the red and the blue. But the thing is, there's there's no way to make monochromatic light that will equally stimulate red and blue, is there? Because right between red and blue is green. So I could show you green light again, but that's just going to stimulate your green cone. So if you want to stimulate red and blue equally without stimulating green, you necessarily have to use more than one wavelength of light or more than one color of light. And so magenta isn't a color of the rainbow because it's something that we perceive when we see equal amounts of red and blue, but we don't see any green. And again, if I turn it over to the image, but with just the green pixels turned off and without balancing the red and blue, now you'll see different shades of red, blue, and magenta. And you should see this magenta colored sort of sphere on my shirt as a nice bright magenta. And now we'll go back to the color image. So that's why you can't actually see magenta on a rainbow, is it's not a color that comes from a single wavelength of light. It's a color that only happens when we have equal stimulation of cones that are on opposite ends of the visible spectrum without any stimulation in the middle. And this is actually also why there's a limit to how bright of a pink color that your monitor can typically show, or any screen, any color screen can show, is because the pixels on your screen are optimized for your cones, right? And so the green is pretty much the greenest green you can ever see, because we'll go back to green. This is just nothing but green, right? It's at a wavelength that's centered right over your green cone. And, well, we can do the same with the red or with the blue, but there's a little bit of a problem there. And so to explain that, I'm going to use this little grading spectrometer I have, which uses a piece of diffraction grading like this that splits light into its colors, which, again, it's similar to a prism, except diffraction gratings are a little bit more consistent and predictable in the way that they split light apart, and they also give you sort of cleaner separation of the colors. So first up, let me show you what light white light looks like, which has, as we just discussed, an equal combination of red, green, and blue. So see, the vertical direction represents what slice of the screen we're taking, and the horizontal direction shows the wavelength of the light. So now if I pull up a slide that has separate red, green, and blue, you see the top is red, the middle is green, the bottom is blue. You might notice that there's actually some blue in 
all of these. And that has to do with the way that the monitor actually produces the different colors of light, which is a whole topic unto itself that I'll talk about some other time. So we can also get magenta that way. And if I just show you a solid screen of magenta, you can see there's two lines, red and blue, but we're missing the green, which if we go back to white, then we get red, green, and blue, go to magenta, take out, takes out the green, and we just get red and blue. So we run into an issue, though, if we want to show a color like purple. And purple slash violet are not quite the same thing, right? So I'm showing you this color here, but you'll notice that this rainbow, which now has purple at the bottom, is actually turning on the red, right? And in an actual rainbow, violet is at the far end. It's a shorter wavelength than blue. And we can still see violet, but it's starting to get into a range of wavelengths where our color vision is not as sensitive, right? So blue is what we see when our blue cone is max is simulated the most but our red and green are still simulated a little bit you'll see that the blue cone is most sensitive at around 400 nanometers but we can see shorter wavelengths than that but you'll also notice that the red and green cones also have some sensitivity at the peak of the blue cone and so this is where it gets a little bit complicated because the blue cone has its most sensitive response at the color that we perceive to be blue in the rainbow, but it's actually at the color that we perceive as violet that the ratio of the blue cone to the red and green cones is the highest. And so your monitor can't really do that because it's optimized to show you the brightest blues, reds, greens, and normal colors that it can. And so to do that, the blue pixels are centered right over the peak of your blue cone's sensitivity. And they could make pixels that were violet instead of blue, but that would be inefficient for several reasons. One, your eye can't actually see violet light as well as it can see blue light. And two, or if you do want the screen to show blue, you would need to add even more red and green light. And so it would be very inefficient in terms of both power consumption, but even worse than that, it would cost you in dynamic range, right? And there's a lot of factors that go into the color quality of a screen. And the wavelength of the pixels is one, but there's basically every screen that has ever been made puts the center of the blue pixels emission line right at peak sensitivity of your blue cone. And they do that to maximize dynamic range and to maximize the efficiency of that light, right? Because you could make violet pixels instead, but your eye would be less efficient and you could just make those pixels brighter to try to compensate, but then you would be sacrificing dynamic range in those pixels and dynamic range often ends up being more important for color quality than the ability to show some ultra deep violets. And likewise, we don't have a name for colors on the sort of far red side of the rainbow. But likewise, the red pixel is centered over the wavelength where your red cone has peak sensitivity. And also this graph I've been showing you is only kind of a approximation of the response of your cones and but this is one reason why there's actually a limit to how vibrant of a pink your monitor can show and if we go back to something that shows magenta the red and the blue are both maximally turned on or if we want to show more of a pink color i could just turn down the blue a little bit but in in either case i i can't move the pixels further apart right and really really vibrant pinks are pinks where your red and blue cones are stimulated, but there's hardly any stimulation of the green. And so in order to not stimulate the green, you have to move further towards the infrared and into deeper reds, but that means that the eye is going to be less sensitive. And so really vibrant pinks are actually, in some sense, dimmer colors, but of course our eyes perceive color on the basis of more than just 
the total brightness. They perceive it based on contrast and a bunch of other context factors. So you could, again, you could make a monitor capable of showing more vibrant violets and pinks, but it would cost you in the form of power consumption and dynamic range. And so typically what they do instead to improve color quality is to just make the, the width of the pixels emission lines narrower. And so again, if we go back to uh, the red, green, blue, and then there's white on the bottom showing all three, you'll notice that each of those is not like a tiny little line. And if I show you for comparison, here's what a laser looks like. Here's a red laser, green laser, and a blue laser. Those have very, very narrow lines because they're really, really strongly monochromatic. They have, they're, again, they're coherent light. So they have very, very, very tiny slices of the rainbow versus the pixels. They have a small slice of the rainbow, but it's not as small as a laser. And so typically, to improve color quality, rather than moving away from the peak sensitivity of your cones and sacrificing dynamic range, they just try to make the line width narrower. Uh, and so that's the typically the benefit of using something like quantum dots or organic LEDs is they have narrower line widths and so you can get better color quality that way without sacrificing dynamic range, but they still can't show the super vibrant violets and magentas, pinks that uh, you can experience in real life. But uh, I mean, at the end of the day, they are just screens, right? Real life is real life. And if you want to experience truly vibrant colors, you can go outside or paint a painting. So that's why you can't have a magenta laser is because there's no such thing as monochromatic magenta light and it's not a color of the rainbow. We perceive magenta when we see red and blue light together but don't see any green light and so there's no way to do that with just one wavelength of light and lasers only produce one wavelength of light so there's no magenta or pink lasers. Hopefully you found that interesting and informative learning some ideas about how we perceive color along the way. Please do let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. I have some more videos planned for the rest of the summer, uh, going into some more aspects of optics amongst other things, and I want to explain how quantum dots actually reduce line width and some things like that because I did my PhD on quantum wells, which are related structure, and also have some other videos planned for just different physics and also probably some more aviation videos, although these are going to be about the physics of flying. So I guess uh, keep a lookout for those if you're interested, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>